Welcome back and what's going on AP World peeps. We have a good video for you today. Lots to cover the first urban societies and civilizations. You should be very familiar with these civilizations and societies and be able to explain them in potential short answer questions. All right, let's start off with what were they? Well, they developed around 5,000 years ago and these societies and civilizations are found in Mesopotamia, Egypt, Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa, Shang, Olmec, and Chavin. These are the six urban societies you should be familiar with. So let's begin with Mesopotamia. This is located in present-day Iraq in the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, located right here. So this area between, Mesopotamia means between these rivers, is where we will find the first civilizations in this region. Sumer is a region in the southern half of Mesopotamia, so down here in this area, and Uruk is the largest city with 50,000 people. There will be a ziggurat in the center and massive walls around the city, and a ziggurat is kind of like a pyramid of large steps building. Irrigation will help foster an abundance of agriculture and this required labor to build the irrigation systems. There were social classes in Mesopotamia. It's a patriarchal society, again, where men were heads of the household. Only boys attended school in Sumer. And kings and nobles were at the top, and kings were seen as divine. And this will be a theme for these early civilizations, that oftentimes kings will be seen as divine or as god himself. Priests and priestesses were also there. They would bring good fortune to communities and free commoners mostly worked on farms outside the city, outside those city walls. There were dependent clients who owned no property and they worked for others. And then at the bottom of the social class pyramid would be slaves, which encompassed those people that were in debt, prisoners of war, and criminals. And they often worked as domestic servants. So be familiar with this social class system in Mesopotamia. Now, Sumerian cities established government that controlled life inside and outside city walls. So it included those farmers outside of city walls. By 2900 BCE, Sumerians developed the writing system of cuneiform, seen here where writing would be done on clay and then hardened in an oven basically or with fire to make it permanent and cuneiform was used to record purchases and taxes. Hammurabi's code which we'll talk about in a couple of videos this is from the 1750s BCE this is a system of laws that is based on class we often think of an eye for an eye with Hammurabi's code but it's a little more complex than that and we'll get into that in video number five. Okay, jumping on over to Egypt. This is located on the Nile River, and you can see today a photograph from outer space. A good portion of Egypt is still located along the Nile River. Annual floods would produce rich soil to grow crops in the Nile River region, and there are natural barriers, deserts, and seas that help prevent foreign invaders during this time. By 3100 BCE, Egypt was unified with Memphis as its capital. And if you've ever played Assassin's Creed Origins, it's taking place after this time, but it's super good. There's a lot of history in it. I highly recommend playing it. And pharaohs will rule in ancient Egypt, and they claim to be divine as well. So again, we see rulers arguing that they are divine. Pyramids were built. They served as tombs for pharaohs, and you can actually climb a pyramid in Assassin's Creed Origins. Pretty cool, you can even slide down it. You ever slide down a pyramid? I didn't until I played it. And this is Khufu's pyramid, which took 20 years to build, and, there are over, and over 84,000 people were used to construct this pyramid. So these massive, just ginormous pyramids were built to serve as tombs for the pharaohs to help them with their afterlife. Pharaohs hoped to take over neighboring Nubia to the south, and they searched for valuables such as gold, ivory, and ebony that were located there. Now jumping over to Mahenjo-Daro and Harappa, this is located along the Indus River Valley around 2000 BCE. There were multi-story houses with indoor plumbing, which is super advanced for its time. Written languages used pictographs, which means it wasn't like letters, but rather symbols or pictures to represent ideas. There's no Rosetta Stone that was discovered, so we can't really decipher what these pictographs mean. The Rosetta Stone, if you remember, is the piece of stone that was found that had that allowed historians to understand what hieroglyphics were. So, so historians really don't understand the written language of Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa yet. Social classes were believed to exist in this area based on things like varying sized homes. So wealthier people had bigger homes than those who weren't as wealthy. 
There were many professions such as jewelers and potters, and rural areas outside of the city was used for farming, just like Mesopotamia. But this civilization, this society, was abandoned around the 19th century BCE. So still a lot of questions about Mahenjo-daro and Harappa. Now, the Shang is located in the Yellow River Valley of present-day China, 1700s to 1100 BCE. Agriculture is going to dominate this region. There are social classes. Many people were peasants. There were some skilled workers, people who worked with pottery, who made wheels, tools. There were some bronze items, including weapons, which were much more stronger than other weapons during that time. And also there was a language that was pictograph based and scribes will play an instrumental role in recording data from this region and here's an example of what the pictograph language looked like there was a strong military again with those bronze weapons and even chariots which we'll talk about more in the next video so very powerful military from the shang they also create a calendar with 12 months the religion was polytheistic so they believed in many gods they also believed in ancestral spirits and oracle bones these are really interesting these oracle bones they would write questions on bones of animals or even like tortoise shells for example and then they would put these into a fire and then cracks would form on them and there would be people who would interpret these cracks to find out the answers to their questions and these oracle bones were discovered by this guy here so again, questions were asked on animal bones, and then the cracks were interpreted when they were put in the fire. So the Shang is going to be overthrown by the Zhou dynasty with the Mandate of Heaven, which we'll talk about in a couple videos, which will influence China for many years to come. Okay, jumping over to the Olmec. They're located in present-day Mexico from 1200 to 400 BCE. They're heavily focused on agriculture, things like avocados, beans, squash. They developed a calendar and also the concept of zero. We'll see many societies develop a calendar and the concept of zero. And society was believed to be hierarchical. And they had these enormous stone heads. You can see this drawing here is a representation of one of these stone heads that weighed thousands and thousands of pounds. And these heads are believed to be representations of different rulers from the Olmec society. Jumping over to the Chavin. This is located in Andean South America along the Andean Mountains, so on the western portion of South America. From 1000 to 200 BCE, their agriculture focused on maize and also cotton to make clothing out of. Llamas provided meat and they had a very weak political structure. So although they're around 800 years, they had a very weak political structure. Okay, a quick recap. Mesopotamia, be familiar with cuneiform. Egypt, be familiar with pharaohs and hieroglyphics, which we'll talk about more in video number five as well. Mahenjo-daro and Harappa. The Shang, don't forget about bronze weapons and oracle bones. The Olmec and agriculture. And the Chavin had a weak political structure. We look forward to seeing you back here for video number four, the emergence of states and new weapons and transportation. Thank you guys for watching. Best of luck this year and have a good day.